All right, so we're back on the power steering uh, for the CUDA. And uh, just like with other uh, major systems, I was able to find the original parts. Um, but in this case, the main reason why I'm not gonna be using them uh, is because there's really no way that I would be able to attach the original Saginaw pump uh, to the Hemi. Um, originally, they mounted directly to the water pump on the front driver's side of the, of the big block. Um, and the Hemi just doesn't have the provisions for something like this. Plus, just like with the other systems, this thing really does weigh a ton. And although they were um, the right pressure uh, that the Borgensen unit would need, there was just really no point in, in me trying to make this work. I don't know of anybody that has been successful with doing that. And there's just better options out there. So uh, taking a look at the original system that came on the, on the Hemi whenever I got it, we had the trunk or the truck front cover with all of the provisions for the PTO and a bunch of other things that I don't, I don't need. And, and I don't know if you've ever seen this in a video, but you can see how there's a bunch of extras on here, which is why I replaced it. But this is where the power steering pump on the trucks mount right to the front cover. Um, that's how they were clocked. It gives the, uh, the reservoir a nice vertical mounting position. And on a, on a car, uh, these three bolt holes actually line up right on the cylinder head, which is um, where we're gonna be trying to attach a, a different type of pump. Um, when I called Mopar originally, because I was gonna use this pump or a pump like it with a remote mount reservoir, they weren't able to tell me anything about it. They couldn't tell me the PSIs, the gallon per minute, anything. Um, they sell a kit for crate motors with this pump on it in Mopar Performance, again, couldn't tell me anything about it. They just said, that's what we use for our crate motors for uh, retrofitting new Hemis into old cars. Being that I didn't want to risk damaging the Borgensen unit, I'm not willing to uh, take their word for it, unfortunately. So I'm going a route that several other people have already done successfully, and that is to use a GM Type 2 pump. Um, Jones Performance Products was able to tell me exactly what the PSI output of their pumps are, the gallons per minute, and it's in within spec of the Borgensen unit. Um, the big reason why I delayed so long in putting this video out was because I wasn't sure what uh, type two pump I wanted to go with. So many aftermarket pump manufacturers come with the plastic reservoir. And again, I didn't want to risk um, running a plastic reservoir in, in running into a crack or a leaking issue later on down the road. So the Jones pump um, comes with a TIG welded remote mount reservoir, or a integrated mount reservoir, which is really nice. They come with all the fittings. It has a CNC mounted cap to it uh, with a, a rubber seal. So you're not gonna get any leaks. And they also offer their CNC machined front pulley, which they recommended I go with a 6.0 pulley because the eventual ATI balancer is going to be just under 6.0 and they want a one-to-one -one ratio up to 6,500 RPM. So um, very nice piece. Um, I got this from a 90 Racing, which is a performance parts supplier uh, based in Pittsburgh. Uh, they were a huge help, got it super fast, super affordable. Uh, big thanks to Sharon Bank there. Um, to get this to mount to the Hemi, even though the GM pump uses these three mounting holes, uh, they are a different spacing than the original Hemi pump mount. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of adapting, but um, Goody's Got a Cuda from Moparts.com was generous enough to share his design with me. Um, and I'm gonna be basing my design pretty much exactly what he did. His was laser cut out of steel, had a provision for a torque strap. I'm not gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be making mine out of uh, piece of uh, 6061 aluminum that I got from Metal Supermarket. I got a four piece or a four foot by four inch piece from them for 20 bucks. So it's gonna be super affordable as long as everything goes right. Um, and what I'm thinking about doing is mounting it right off to the side using the same bolt holes here in the cylinder head having it level with the water pump and uh, it should tuck in there nice and clean. So first thing we got to do is get that plate mounted uh, to the provision in the head and then go from there.
All right, so what I did was I used Goody's design and traced out the profile of, uh, of what it would look like uh, just to make sure that I had all the holes in the right spot and that I wasn't going to go over the edge on, the, on this piece of aluminum. Um, I already drilled all the holes and I know they work and it, the only reason why I didn't videotape that is because it was, I did it with a drill and not a drill press, which is not the right way to do it, but that's pretty much the only tools I have. And I think you could do a lot of this stuff using hand tools and, and you don't need a big machine shop at your convenience. But what I did was I, I drilled and tapped this hole here and I put the pump right on the plate and I held it down and I just used the drill to find these other two holes to make sure that I wasn't going to be off. Um, there's really not a whole bunch of forgiveness whenever it comes to bolting this plate to the engine. So you got to be pretty close. Once I knew that these three holes were, were good, I drilled the rest of this one all the way through and then I put a stud in the back of the hole uh, at the nine o'clock position on here. This is a threaded hole all the way through, but the threads don't line up. So you can't put a, uh, a fully threaded bolt or a stud all the way through it. So I put a stud on the back side of this and I bolted it to here. And I literally mounted this right to the engine and positioned the water or the uh, steering pump so that it was plumb uh, straight up and down. And that gave me the location, <clears throat> excuse me, of these two holes here, which are uh, 5 eighths by 16 thread. Uh, drilled those and tapped them, and now we're ready to do our, our first ever mounting of this GM pump to a Chrysler product, at least on my car. All right, and there it is mounted for the first time. Um, as you can see, these two bolt holes aren't exactly in line with each other. Um, this is a much more symmetrical uh, design bolt at uh, 12, 6, and then 9. Um, there's a nut on the back of the stud, which is holding it there. And then I have the two socket head cap screws that uh, I'm using it to affix to this plate. It's half inch thick. I, I think those uh, threads will be just fine. I had alternator mounts on a, a race motor that mounted very similar, and I never had issues with threads pulling out or anything. Um, the only thing left for me to do now is to kind of clean up this shape a little bit. You can leave it like that, <clears throat> but I want it to look halfway decent whenever it comes time to get it painted and everything. The uh, cap screws for these, um, I had to use nuts on them, which I'm going to get hardware from Bolt Depot. Um, but what you're looking for is M8 by 125 by 35 uh, millimeters in length. So um, that'll let that sit nice and flush. There is one more uh, mounting hole behind this pump, which I'm going to have to uh, drill a uh, counter bore in so that the head goes down into the plate a little bit because there's really no clearance on the back side. And I might end up having to grind some of the head off, but it, it's behind the pump, so you won't even see it. Um, using the six inch, using the six inch pulley, we'll get it right in here. Plenty of clearance between the tensioner and the air compressor or air conditioning compressor, which is off a truck, which is why it doesn't line up. So um, should look nice uh, and do exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, once I'm ready to do the lines, I, I'll do those whenever the engine's back out and the K-frame is there and I can put the headers in and, and have a little bit more range to, to get everything mocked up. So let's see what we can do about this bracket. So here it is, cut it out with a jigsaw. It actually cut relatively smooth. Um, then I hit it with a flapper wheel just to kind of smooth out all the edges. Um, I'm actually not bad at grinding because of how bad I am at welding. So um, I didn't put any of the internal cutouts in there just because you can't see it anyway. And being that this is aluminum, I didn't want to you know, get too overzealous, but uh, 
it should uh, should do exactly what I need it to do. Doesn't look like something you'd probably buy from uh, Jones Racing Products or anybody else that's mass producing these, but it should work exactly the way I need it to. So let's put it on. And there it is all complete. I just put the order into Bolt Depot to get the stainless steel hardware, so I'll be able to get rid of these spacer nuts. But overall, it turned out really well. Not bad for 20 bucks and an afternoon's worth of work. So big shout out to Goody again for sharing that design. Um, something that anybody can really do in their garage with some basic hand tools, as you can see. Uh, also shout out to 90 Racing again for this pump. It looks fantastic. I'm, I'm really glad that I went with this Jones pump. Uh, that integrated reservoir will save me one line at least uh, coming off that steering box. Um, still have to do a cooler, but we can do that uh, later on. Overall, not a bad project. I'm, I'm glad that it unfolded the way it did. So I'll probably either polish that bracket up or spray paint it black. I don't know how well black paint will stick to it, but we'll see. Um, things to do later. Next, I'm going to be trying to tackle the alternator setup here. So I, I want to run a one wire alternator. Uh, they do make a Mopar performance one wire alternator that bracks or that bolts into the provisions for the alternator here. These Gen 3 uh, housings had bolts that ran left to right, which was a little bit weird for me. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. But being that the supply and demand, they're 500 50 bucks I think so what I think I'm going to try to do is come up with a bracket design to utilize a GMCS uh, alternator uh, housing design um, I ran one of those on my race car it worked flawlessly it was $60 and I think it came for a Ford tractor and it was really all I needed I had put a couple big dollar alternators on that car and they failed left and right and I was super disappointed with um, the quality and and how long they lasted. So we'll see what we can come up with to see if I can save a few bucks there and also make a decent design. So.